My name is William Justice. Today, I'm gonna to attempt to juggle fireballs. Now, don't try this at home without the assistance of DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. You might burn yourself. So this is a quick follow-up to my last video where I did some tracking, where I had some uh, balls on the screen and tracked them around. And one of the things I did was attach a particle emitter to one of the objects I was tracking. So I kind of wanted to show you how I did that today. Plus, I got a little bit of feedback, so I thought I might have to try some juggling. My video studio said, how about juggling next time? And Franco was nice enough to say that he thought I could be a successful juggler. So we're gonna have to see what I can do. So my original plan in the last video was to do some juggling, but I wasn't sure that all the tracking would work and I didn't want to screw it up. So um, I went with something that I knew was gonna work. This one, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. I'm gonna throw these balls around and we're gonna see if we can track them and then attach a, uh, some particles to wherever they're moving. I, I really don't have a lot of experience with the particle emitter, so I'm gonna try to create a fireball. It may turn out and look like something completely different, um, but let's see what happens. Here we go. Not too bad. Okay, uh-oh, ah, almost lost it. I did lose it. Ah. I'm pretty rusty with the juggling. I have not done this in a long time. Okay, well, if you like my videos, um, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna keep juggling here. Comment below and be nice on my juggling skills. Let me know what you think about the video and hopefully we'll make some really interesting particles. Okay, let's jump into Resolve. We're gonna take the clip I just did of juggling, um, put it up into Fusion, do some tracking and try to make some fireballs or something similar. All right, so here's the, uh, the clip of uh, my juggling skills right there. And what we're gonna do is first we're gonna track one of the balls and then we're gonna attach some particles to it and kind of set up a fireball or maybe even try out some different effects. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is right click on our clip and choose new fusion clip. And with the playhead over the clip, we're gonna click fusion at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna track the, uh, we're gonna start with tracking the yellow ball. This would have worked better I think if I had um, used different colored balls, it might've been easier to track. Um, sometimes the balls kind of go overlap each other and the tracker would get confused and pick up the wrong ball. So um, in the video you saw, I had to do a little bit of work in to get that right. With media in one selected, hit control space and type tracker. And we're gonna add the basic tracker in here. So let's uh, track the yellow ball. So let's go to the first frame and we'll take the tracker and put it right on top of that ball. We'll make it about the size of the ball and increase the search area right there. All right, let's see what kind of a track we get starting out. Um, in the tracker area, let's choose uh, best match and see what we get. Okay, so right there, you see that the track went uh, the track it lost the tracking right in here. First, let's add a tracking marker so we can kind of see where we're at. Let's uh, take a background and put that into the node flow here. We'll add an ellipse mask on it, and let's shrink it down. So we're gonna attach um, this little black spot to, the, to where the ball is with the tracker. So for, I'll click the ellipse, right click on the position center property, choose connect to tracker one path position. And now we have that black dot kind of fo following where the ball is. And you'll see we lose it right up here. Right there, we, we lost the position. So um, I had a little bit of tracking trouble with this one. I also had problems because um, sometimes I threw these balls up into the sky. It was kind of a real cloudy overcast day and the tracker would lose that. So what we need is we need more contrast and we really need these objects to stick out. So um, we're gonna try something different here. This is a, a different approach. You can use uh, color correctors and all kinds of stuff. But we're gonna use a keyer and try to key out this yellow ball to really isolate it. Click on the background, hit control space, and let's try the ultra keyer. I think the delta keyer would work as well, but try the ultra keyer. And we'll take the media in and put it into that. And let's put the keyer in the viewer. Okay, so we wanna get everything out of this except for where this ball is. Let's uh, go to the ultra keyer, click the eyedropper for the color, and we're gonna pick the color right on top of that ball. Like that, and you notice that everything kinda goes transparent because it's being keyed out. But we're gonna make some adjustments with the uh, threshold and bring some of this back. A little bit like that. We'll see how much we can do. Um, there's a, really a lot of settings you can play with in here. So you can see that everything is pretty much solid. You can hit uh, this option up here to get the alpha channel. And you'll see that we really, what we have now is we have a black dot on a white background. So that should be really easy to track. 
let's click this to flip it back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a background and put the keyer into the background and that's gonna give us something like this with this transparent part. Okay, so we got some really good contrast here between the transparent area and the black. So let's get rid of that first tracker and off with the background two selected, hit control space and we're gonna add a new tracker. We're gonna take our tracking point and put it right over our ball area. Now, you notice we can't really see anything because over here when you look in these channels, the, the tracker is looking for, I think, believe this one's luminance. Yes, it is. Um, we're gonna click this one to get it to look at the alpha channel. And all of a sudden you see that there's white and black with really good contrast. So let's go make sure we're on the first frame and we're gonna take our tracking point and put it right on top of that. And now let's track it with something that has really good contrast. Now the screen doesn't update here, I'm not sure why, but I believe it's working. Okay, so the green line shows where our track is and we can kind of see it moving around. So let's go back over to our media out. Let's click on the ellipse and double click on the center property to reset it. We're gonna right click on that, connect to, and we're gonna connect it to the new tracker we just created, um, tracker one path position. And let's see if it the ball tracks. It's looking pretty good. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. Um, now we don't need this keyer anymore, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove that. Um, now you would do the same thing for each of the balls. I had to do some manual movements for these two balls that are kind of the same color. Um, when they went on top of each other, I had to go into the tracker and adjust the positions, but that's not too difficult, just a little bit of manual work. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do some particles. So now that we have our ellipse, we're gonna want particles coming out of where that ellipse is. So let's add a part, start with adding a particle emitter. In the node area, hit control space and type in P emitter. There's our particle emitter. Now we just need a particle renderer. Hit control space and type in P render. And there's our particle renderer. We're gonna connect these up and we're gonna take the renderer and put it into the merge. So it's gonna be merged right on top. Okay, so by default, you see it's creating these particles in the middle. So we got particles in the middle. So let's make them a little bit bigger. The uh, this icon here controls the particle style. So let's click that and we're gonna set it to a, we'll choose Ingon and we'll choose one of these guys and we'll choose this one right here and let's make it a lot bigger. There we go, okay, so we can kind of, st we're starting to see our particles right there. We wanna have these particles be emitted right where the ball is as it's moving through the screen. So to do that, we're gonna to go to this next tab over here called region and this is this lets us select where the particles are going to be emitted from. So right now it's set up for sphere. Um, we could set up for a cube and it's gonna be, the particles will be emitted from this cube here. We can adjust the properties on it. But in our case, we're gonna choose bitmap. This means the particles are gonna be emitted from a shape that we pass into it. So with this selected, there's this option here on the emitter called bitmap region and we're gonna use the same ellipse that we used for this black dot. I'm gonna take that and put it into the emitter region. And particles are gonna to start to be emitted from where our black dot is as it goes. You'll see right there. And we're gonna use these particles to kind of create our fire effect. Okay, let's make some adjustments to how the particles look. Hit the P emitter, we're gonna to go to the very first one and we can bring up a lot of particles if we want. And we're gonna take the lifespan way down. And you'll notice as the lifespan goes down, the trail behind that dot kind of decreases in length because each of the particles are not staying on the screen as long. And here's what we have. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so how do we turn these particles into fire? I, I played with a lot of different things. It was kind of difficult with this one because the, the particles are emitted as this thing is moving. So the movement was a little bit odd, but uh, hopefully it looked okay. So let's go back into the style area. Obviously we can play with some of these different settings here. Let's go ahead and choose this one. So the size, we're gonna have the size get big and then small. So what this is, is this is size over life. So on the left hand side, this is the size where we start out. And the right hand size is the particles, as they age, they get smaller. So you can see the ones at the top are smaller. And we can actually do a curve here, make some adjustments like that. So we got bigger particles and then they get smaller right there. Okay, so obviously for fire, we need some color. So that's really easy to do. So we're gonna open up the color controls and we're gonna choose color over life. On the left side here, this is the color that 
the particle starts out at. So we're going to click this little arrow, click the white box, and we're going to have it start out as a kind of a bright yellow. And the red yellow there. And then we're going to click anywhere in this color bar to create another color point. Drag this one all the way over to the right. And at, at the end of it, we're going to have it be a uh, red. So it's going to go from yellow to red. All right, so we got a little bit of color now. Let's uh, let's make our particles bigger. So go back to the size. Let's make them one. We'll get get them make them really big and chunky in the beginning. Okay, it's starting to look like something there. Um, I, I played around with a lot of things, but um, try to keep it pretty basic. The next thing that I did, we're going to move this particle render up. I added some some glow to it. So hit the P renderer, hit Control Space, and let's type in glow. And we'll bring the glow up a little bit. Adjust the glow size. You can play with any of these parameters that you want. And we're going to do a, add a soft glow. And we got something that's kind of looking like it's a little, little some flames here, kind of hot. So let's see what we got. It's a little bright, so I'm going to tone that down just a bit. There's a couple different ways. You kind of have to play with the different settings. You can adjust the glow um, as well as coming in and adjusting the particle size. It's not too bad there. Um, the other thing I did was, let's take these, get rid of those, move them over here. And we're going to put this black dot on top of our fire. The other thing I did was I adjusted this part in the middle. Um, let's go ahead and we'll make that kind of an orangish red. Like that. Take the ellipse and we'll give it a little soft edge. So it's going to be kind of a burning part in the middle. Then I also played around with a couple things where I added a displace. Let's put the uh, displace node in here and we'll add a fast noise. This is going to take this middle part and kind of move it around a little bit, kind of give it a little fire flame effect. Let's take a look at our fast noise over here. Let's crank up the detail, the contrast, and scale. And that's going to be affecting our little fire spot in the middle. We're going to set the center of the fire, center of the fire spot to match the uh, path position. So it's going to be right in there. And the last thing we want to do is pr probably make that a uh, little bit smaller, scale it down just a touch. And we're going to take the fast noise and bump up the C the rate so that the middle part is going to be kind of moving around a little bit. Let's see Okay, the fire trail is a bit long here, so if you want this to be shorter or longer, all you need to do is adjust the particle lifespan. So we'll go back to the particle emitter, main tab, and actually we can bump up the number of particles there if you want to kind of fill this in a little bit better, and take the lifespan and bring it down. Put it like, uh, let's do like six. Okay, it's not perfect. I played around with the other one quite a bit more, but this is the basics of what I did. We had the trail here with some different kind of glow effects. You had more glow, it's going to get a little bit hotter look. And I experimented with some blurs and some other things, and then the this fast noise here is kind of a, you get a flaming spot kind of in the middle, right there. It's a little bit dark, probably would work better if it was a touch lighter. But anyway, that's the basics of the uh, juggling flaming fireballs with some tracking. Okay, well thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, if you enjoy my videos and want to see more, please like and subscribe.